Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Prior Power Principles. Thank you for joining us today. We are at episode 14 and we are at a chapter that talks about men and women of prior. And today, Elder David will be focusing on Enoch and Abraham, and I'll be focusing on Jacob and Moses. So we're going to share some wonderful insights from these Bible characters, you know, who were people of prior and see how much we can pattern their lives, you know. But before we do that, let's just have a word of prayer. And I'm going to ask Elder David to pray that part before we start. Father in heaven, we come to you today, Lord, and we're asking that you would put us in tune with your spirit and your angels. Father, draw near to us. Lord, our desire is to uplift Jesus, to draw close to you, to honor you with our hearts and not just our lips that we would be yielded to your will and your purpose and that we would seek your glory in everything we do and say. And I just ask that today that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart would be acceptable in your sight, Father. Glorify your name, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Again, if you're joining us for the first time, uh, we are following the book Prior. Um, by Ellen G. White. Elder David, would you hold up your book so um, they can see um, oh, the book? Uh, so there it is. Um, you can get it from Amazon, your local Adventist bookstore, or you can just talk to your pastor and see how you can get it. You can also download it from the app EGW Writings, and you can follow along with us. So today we're going to be talking on chapter 13. Again, I want to remind you about our prior focus for today. Elder David will be praying specially for seeking God's will. And I'll be, I'll be praying for us to establish an Eden home. All right. So I will be sharing my testimony um, uh, right now. And then Elder David will share his. So I was always like, uh, you know, thinking about what uh, what testimony I should share. And I, I had this one in mind that I'm just going to share with you. I remember in Jamaica, my first car that I bought, and I, I don't know if you can go back to the, the experience when you when you bought your first car. It's really a high feeling. Um, so when I bought my first car, I remember it was a manual Suzuki Swift. And, you know, I love the manual car. I didn't like the automatic and I would really drive and so on. But I remember uh, specifically this day that my car had, you know, it had gone really low in gas and I was like far from my home and I had some financial, you know, you know struggles at a, at a particular time. And I just remember praying to God and I was like, I know that this gas cannot take me. You know, it was already on that E, the light had already, you know, shown up in the car. And I just remember I just prayed and I was like, Lord, I know this gas can't take me home. And, you know, the financial struggle that I'm having at, the, at this particular moment. And I remember that, you know, I got home safely on the, the amount of gas that I knew couldn't take me home. And God just revealed to me that he extended the mileage. And that was like a miracle that God worked for me. And, um, you know, I, I always kind of flash back to that sometimes that, you know, you know, God is a God of, he's a miracle working God. And I remember I've shared with you, like, you know, small miracles that God have worked in my life. And this was just one of them. And that was not the only time. I remember other times when he had extended the mileage on my car, you know, if God is doing this for me. I know you can do do it for you. You just have to have that faith that is, you know, rooted and grounded in believing uh, God at his word and taking him and trusting him with all you have and just surrendering fully to him. Make sure your lives are lined up, um, you know, with the prayer that you're praying so that God can hear you. And that's just my little testimony for today. So over to you, Elder David. <laughs> well, I had a couple of stories. One, one was uh, sig very significant to me because I've sometimes struggled to hear God's voice and to know his will and to understand how to pray for others. And I remember I was with a friend of mine and we were praying for somebody and we were gathered around in a circle and we were all praying for this person in the center of the circle. It's kind of neat to be in the circle being prayed for. But <laughs> I was sitting there and, and I was asking God to sh show me how to pray for this person. And, and for some reason, you know, there were some times in your life where you really know God's will and you know his and you hear his voice clearly. And, and, and then there's other times when you struggle to hear it. Well, this was one of those times. And 
I was with uh, one of my best friends at the time who was a powerful prayer warrior. Mm -hmm. And we were, we were praying and, and I would, I was, you know, my mind was clear and I was trying to see what God wanted me to pray for this person. And I wasn't getting anything. And, and uh, finally my friend stopped and he says, God's trying to show you something, but you don't know how to see what he wants you to see. Mm -hmm. And he says, here, what you do is, when you shut your eyes to pray, you, you look at the person when you're with your eyes shut, you see them. And then the Lord can show you what to pray for them. So I did that. I, my eyes were shut. I could see the person in, in front of me with my eyes shut. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord began to show me what to pray. Some texts would come to my mind or ideas and thoughts and would, instead of trying to bl blank my mind, which is not biblical <laughs> for some reason you know it's like you don't sometimes you just don't know what to do right mm -hmm. and uh, so so I, in my mind's eye I saw the person the Lord showed me what to pray and and that I'll never forget that 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 friend of mine knew that God was trying to show me something and he knew that I was stuck and didn't know how to receive it so I'm hoping that you will be able to learn how to pray for people so that you know what God wants you to enter, how, how God wants you to intercede. Well, uh, it, was, it was shortly after that, I was praying for my mother-in-law. Now her, her situation was, uh, her husband had left her for somebody else and um, she was single for quite a long time. And she had dated several people, but they just weren't, you know, well, though some of them were maybe nice people, they weren't the right people. And, and she was in a relationship and the Lord kept trying to get her to get away from the relationship. And, and she was struggling with that. Well, you get lonely. It's, it's tough, you know, and relationships are very difficult. Mm -hmm. So um, I was praying for her and, and in my mind's eye, when I was praying for her, I saw this gentleman holding her in his arms and he was walking backwards and behind him was a cliff and i just felt panic in my heart I go, oh no this guy's walking carrying her over cliff and i got on the phone and i called her and i said oh, i was just praying for you and i saw this gentleman uh, carrying you in his arms and he was walking backward and he was just ready to go off the cliff it wasn't probably a year or two later when she finally met, well, it was several years later after she finally met the person who she was supposed to marry. She said, I just want to thank you so much for telling me that. She said, every time I was with that person, I knew God didn't want me with him, but I was really struggling with letting this relationship go. And every time he would want to go out with me and stuff, that image would come to my mind of him carrying me backwards towards the cliff. And I knew, and God used that to protect me. And she says, now that I look back on it, I don't know how I could be so foolish to think that that was a good relationship. She says, in my heart of hearts, I knew that God was trying to get me away from it. But we, we deceive ourselves. We think we're, you know, well, it could be good. You know, this is a nice person in this way or that way. But God knows the heart, and we don't know the heart. Yes. Anyway, there was another time that uh, ran a story that Randall just told me last night. And, and it was very meaningful to me. And I want to share it with you. Um, he was working at a church in San Francisco. And when he got to the church, there was only $14,000 in the account and the church was very run down. And so he got on his knees. He said, Lord, what do I do? And the Lord says, start right where you see what needs to happen just start with what you can and so he spent that fourteen thousand dollars and very rapidly went through that and then he said now lord i'm out of money and there's a lot of work to do and so he got on his knees and he says lord what do i do now and the lord says ask me and he says lord give me ten thousand dollars and he says i could distinctly see jesus face and he was going more thirty thousand dollars more seventy thousand dollars more finally he said two hundred thousand dollars and the lord finally shook his head 
Well, he got mm -hmm. just under $200,000. It was just the day or so later that the conference called while he was working at the church there. And um, the, the, said, uh, the guy said, who is this? And I said, this is Randall. Uh, and uh, who might you be? Oh, I'm just working here at the church. Well, who's in charge? Well, that would be me. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, what are you doing there? And he says, well, I'm working on the church. I'm restore, starting to restore it. He says, mm -hmm. well, now that's interesting. And he says, somebody has left $186,000. And they, it was designated for this church and specifically for remodel and upkeep. Mm, that's so powerful. <laughs> he, God gave him the money that he needed. He actually ended up running out of that money because there was so much new roof and new air conditioning system. He had to ask the Lord again. He got a total of 500 over close to $500,000 in total. Mm. And God provided all of his needs and that put that church in good shape. So the point that I want to bring home here is the Lord says, seek my face, seek my face. And also it says in uh, Isaiah 59, it says, your sins have hidden my face from you so that I cannot hear. Mm. For Randall, the Lord, he was able to see God's face and God was able to clearly let him know, no, you need to ask me for more. You need more than that. The Lord mm. knows exactly what our needs are. Isn't it strange that, you know, and he kept trying to impress upon Randall. He says, you don't understand. This seems like a lot of money to you, but to me, this is nothing. Yeah. I own everything. Yeah. This is really yeah. nothing. Dropping I'm hoping that if you need something, <laughs> if, if you are needy and you are trusting in God, that you will seek his face until he is able to meet your needs according to what he knows your needs are not mm -hmm. just what you believe your needs are. Amen. All right, so we are going to move into our next segment, which is talking about um, men and women of prayer. And I'm just thinking that it's just so wonderful to be, you know, included in this chapter. I wonder if we think of ourselves, could there be a chapter with my name, Gabriel, David, and someone just reading about, you know, <laughs> these men and women of prayer, but I pray that today that, you know, as we live in our individual homes, that we could, you know, just visualizing ourselves as men and women of prayer, that people are not just, you know, reading about, but looking at our lifestyle and see that, you know, they can probably say, oh, that's, there goes a man of prayer, there goes a woman of prayer. All right, so Elder David, uh, do you want to share with us anything from um, Enoch. So once again, Elder David is going to be sharing about Enoch and Abraham, and I'm going to be sharing a little bit about um, Jacob and Moses. So we can take turns. So you can share about Enoch, and then um, I'll be sharing about Jacob, and then Elder David will be sharing about Abraham, and then we will just close with Moses. Okay. Oh, Enoch is such a rich, rich story, and uh, it doesn't mention it here, but it says that Enoch was what a certain age and he had a son who was Methuselah. And it says that after that, Enoch walked with God. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until Enoch was a father. It wasn't until Enoch accepted the responsibility of caring for his own son that he began to understand the heart of God and it was from that point that he began to walk with God. If you have children, you know the responsibility that weighs upon you. You know your, your need of divine guidance mm -hmm. and the heavenly father. We need to understand that God is like a parent. Mm -hmm. He responds to our need. And the more helpless we are, the more he is inclined to help us. Mm. So let me just read some here. Communing thus with God, Enoch came more and more to reflect the divine image. 
His face was radiant with holy light, even the light that shines in the face of Jesus. As he came forth from these divine communions, even the ungodly beheld it with awe the impress of heaven upon his countenance. His face waxed stronger, his faith waxed stronger, his love became more ardent. With the lapse of centuries, to him, prayer was as the breath of the soul. He lived in the atmosphere of heaven. I, I talked to a friend uh, on, the, on the other coast, and um, this person's son just moved home, going through terrible, terrible struggles. She says it's like, it's like living in a hell uh, because this, the son is just bitter and angry and his life has gone to a dark, dark place and, and uh, habits and, and issue, issues that would just break any mother's heart. And he mm. would lash out at his mother is really not against her, but he lashes out against God and against just everything. He just has so much pain in his life. And mm -hmm. she, she called and we were praying last night and, and there was just this evil influence in the house. So we were talking about how to claim the promises, how to commune with God, how to talk faith and talk accepting God's grace and, and to speak as though our faith is, is invincible. And talked about how when often these things would happen in my house, when you could tell when evil angels would come into the house and immediately you have to stop and pray and ask Jesus to, to disperse and, and disseminate them and get, send them out. Right. But the young people that used to come over to our house, they would always mention it's so peaceful in here. Our house, our home should have this atmosphere of heaven mm. in the atmosphere of light and peace. And it will, when we're seeking God, and I remember there was somebody come over who was very troubled and who had some demonic influences in their life. And after they left, mm -hmm. I noticed that my wife and I began to argue and, and that some contention got into the home. And we, we realized within a short amount of time, the peace have, has left our home. Mm -hmm. We got on our knees. We recognized what happened. Sometimes people will come into your home and they will leave a guest with them when they leave. And, and you need to realize that when you sense that evil presence, you get on your knees and you pray and God will dispel that. And he will again bring in holy angels so that there's an atmosphere of light and peace and love and joy. That's the way our homes need to be. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. It says, I wish I could impress upon every worker in, in God's cause the great need of continual earnest prayer. They cannot be constantly upon their knees, but they can be uplifting their hearts to God. Mm -hmm. This is the way that Enoch walked with God. That's what we're talking about. When you become accustomed to the presence of Jesus, you know when he's there and when he's not. Mm -hmm. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Those mm -hmm. promises will come to your mind. Great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. And the peace of God shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Whenever you lose your sense of peace, you know that it's time to seek the Lord and, bring, and let Jesus bring that peace back into your heart. This is the way Enoch lived, and he learned to walk with God every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, one more. Enoch became a preacher of righteousness, making known to the people what God had revealed to him. Enoch spent much time by himself out in the wilderness, out in, by him, out alone, because mm -hmm. he recognized his need of uh, rejuvenation and revival. Um, Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. That does not happen when you're in the middle of chaos and confusion and the frustration and all the, 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 uh, Mm -hmm. interactions with human other humans around you, especially those who are not uh, used to communion and having the peace of God around them. Mm -hmm. A lot of times uh, we need to separate. Like Jesus told his disciples after uh, they had a particularly tough time, he says, come, let us separate for a while. They went out into the wilderness where Jesus could commune with his father and thus be sustained. Mm -hmm. He said, come apart and rest a while. Mm -hmm. This was after John the Baptist was uh, beheaded. 
they needed to have time to to reconnect with Jesus. Enoch understood this, and we need to understand it too. There are times that we need to be by ourselves, alone with God, so that when we come into the presence of others, we're bringing with us the joy and the peace of heaven, and we will have a positive influence instead of just joining into the chaos and confusion that goes on in so many people's lives. Mm -hmm. We can learn so much from Enoch, and uh, what a blessing it is. Uh, to learn to live in the secret place of the Most High, to dwell in the presence of Jesus, to receive the refreshing from the presence of the Lord. You see, it's in the presence of the Lord that we are refreshed. Amen. Yes, yeah, so that's just a beautiful um, you know, illustration of Moses, uh, sorry, of Enoch. <laughs> And, you know, his life is one that we should try to pattern after. And, you know, he was a man that was translated, you know. I wish that was me. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to be sharing a little bit about Jacob. And, you know, we remember who Jacob was. He was like the um, the son of, um, who was it again? Is Israel? Oh, no, is, sorry, his name was changed, right? Yeah, to Israel. Yeah. Yeah. To Israel Isaac's after. son. Isaac's son, yes. Isaac and Rebecca. Sometimes yes. I mix up my um, Bible <laughs> <Patriarchs>. <laughs> family, the <laughs> patriarch. Yes, Isaac and Rebecca. And, you know, Jacob's name was later, uh, you know, changed to uh, Israel, as we said, the father of, you know, all of us. So um, from Jacob, we learn um, about, and I'm going to read something here. It says, prevailing prior. It's a Jacob prevail because he was persevering and determined his experience testifies to the power of importunate prior and importunate there mean like, you know, pleading, you know, like you know, pleading with God persistently, like keep going at it, pleading with God. And that was the kind of prayer that um, Jacob prayed, you know, so many times that we pray about something and we just give up, you know, we give up and we're like, oh, God is not going to ever answer this prayer or I don't see anything happening. And we kind of, what he would say, throw in the, 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 the towel, but in the life of Jacob, we're encouraged to be determined, you know, to continue to press our petitions before the throne of God. So if you have, for example, you want to change diet, you want to change your diet and you realize that, you know, you don't have the power to do it, but you prayed about it and you're like asking God, God, I really want to do this. I know it's the right thing and God has spoken to your heart, you know, to, to do this, but you, you just don't have the strength. Look at Enoch's life and see how persistent he was, how, how he prayed um in a persevering and determined manner and so god will give us the victory and our our cap characters at the same time are being changed the more that we persist in prayer it says here those who are unwilling to forsake every sin and to seek earnestly for god's blessing will not obtain it I probably you probably missed that one i'm just going to repeat it those who are unwilling to forsake every sin and to seek earnestly for god's blessing will not obtain it, but all who will lay hold of God's promises and, as did Jacob and be as earnest. Earnest, you know, is like from your heart, truthfully, you know, holy. Um, and uh, earnest and persevering as he was, will succeed as he succeeded. So may, you know, Jacob be an example to us to persevere and to claim the promises of God. So when you go to pray, I would suggest to you, and I would I maybe not suggest, but I would say um, whenever you go to pray, try to go through the Bible mentally and take one promise, just one promise, claim it as your own as you go to pray and it will make a difference. And as you study more, you will learn more about the Bible promises and then you can apply this kind of principle as Jacob did, claiming a promise each time, claiming a promise. And then you'd probably be able to claim promises specific to you know the trouble that you're experiencing the more you study your bible and of the different bible promises and to the, in today's age we have so much technology and so even if you do not know like what bible promises they are you can type bible promises in google and it will probably give you a list of some bible promises and you can write them down you know write them down and every time that you go to pray just pick one you don't have to pick you know a bunch of them just pick one promise and say lord today i'm praying this promise that you said you will you will never forsake me you know, you claim that one promise and more and more as you, you go along, you'll be able to pray and succeed as Jacob did. Yeah. 
Is that all for Jacob? Yes, that's all I'm sharing today for Very Jacob. <laughs> all right. So I can go over it to you and you share uh, some things about the father of all nations. <laughs> yes, yes. We should Abraham. probably do like a this quiz, you know? <laughs> yeah, you said the name. I was going to like, oh, give them a minute to just, you know, guess who is the father of all nations when you said it. <laughs> you gave the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, reading from page 124, it says, uh, Abraham, Abraham, everywhere he went, every where he pitched his tent, he set up an altar and where he, there he prayed. And if you, if you'll go through the book of Genesis and you look up the word altar, I, the Lord led me on, guided me through a study <clears throat> once. And every time it says that Abraham set up an altar. It says God came and, and communed with him. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a, a distinction. There's, there's a, a clear illustration of every time the altar was established, God came to interact with Abraham in a special way. Mm -hmm. You might wonder, how do I set up an altar in my home? We live in such different times. But mm -hmm. The way the, the family altar is set up is where you have morning and evening worship. Mm -hmm. This is what they were doing. They were having a worship time, morning and evening. Now, in our home, we have, we have our individual worship every morning mm -hmm. because we don't connect in the mornings because we're all going our different way at different times. But every evening after supper, we, get, we gather and we pray and we open the Word of God or we're going through uh, the great controversy. Mm -hmm. But if you want, if you want a home where the divine presence is known and felt, where there's communion with God, this is the pattern that needs to be raised up. Mm -hmm. In every home, someone needs to be responsible, and it's typically the man, but there's not always a man in a home. So mm -hmm. the, the responsible person needs to establish this altar, this altar of prayer, this altar of communion time with God. Mm -hmm. And this is what Abraham did. Uh, it says, um, so the homes of Christians should be the lights in the world. From mm -hmm. them, morning and evening, prayer should ascend to God in sweet incense. And as the morning dew, his mercies and blessings will descend upon the suppliants. Fathers and mothers, each morning and evening, gather your children around you in humble supplication. Lift the heart to God for help. Your dear ones are exposed to temptation. Daily annoyances beset the path of young and old. Mm -hmm. Those who would live patiently, lovingly, cheerful lives must pray. Only by receiving constant help from God can we gain victories over self. <laughs> it's self that is the great enemy. <laughs> Each morning, consecrate yourselves and your children to God for that day. Make no calculation for months or years. These are not yours. Mm. One brief day is given you as if it were your last on earth. Work during the, its hours for the master. Lay all your plans before God to be carried out or given up as his providence shall indicate. Accept his plans instead of your own even though their acceptance requires the abandonment of cherished projects. This is tough. Mm -hmm. This exposes our own willful self. And it is yeah. self that is the great battle that we fight against. Mm -hmm. We have these things that we want to get done. And if Jesus is going to be Lord, we have to submit and surrender our will mm -hmm. to him so that he can work in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Hmm. accept his plans instead of your own even though their acceptance requires the abandonment of cherished projects thus the life will be molded more and more after the divine example and the peace of god which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through christ jesus there is the key to having the peace of heaven there's one more mm -hmm. here yeah. Abraham could not explain the leadings of providence. He had not realized his expectations, but he held fast the promise. I will bless thee, I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Mm -hmm. With earnest prayer, he considered how to preserve the life of his people and his flocks, but he would not allow circumstances to shake his faith. 
in God's words. So in prayer, he was asking for wisdom. We're responsible not only for our children, but for those who are within our house. Abraham had 118 servants, at least that we are know of, that are, are numbered. Um, it says that, uh, that um, there was a time when Lot was taken captive and Abraham gathered all his servants. They were armed and trained, 318 armed and trained servants, and they went out to save his, his nephew, Lot. Mm -hmm. I, I think some people struggle over that, and this is what I've, I've learned from it. Abraham did not have to rely upon weapons for himself. He had the angel of the Lord around him. But in order to save others, he had weapons and had trained servants who, mm -hmm. when God told him, see, his trust was not in those weapons. His trust was in God. And he went out and was able to get Lot and, the, and save the whole city of Sodom. Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting then that after saving Sodom, Melchizedek came and blessed him and blessed him and and because of his selfless act of putting his life at risk for a wicked city and for someone who had not done him the best mm -hmm. that shows the unselfishness mm. of Abraham and it shows the character of Jesus Amen. he was willing to put himself at risk to save people who didn't think so much would didn't care as much for him mm -hmm. that isn't that doesn't that sound like jesus indeed yeah. yes all right um, i'm gonna share about um moses you know if you quiz any person that probably doesn't know much about the bible they and you ask them have you heard of Moses? They probably will say, yes, I've heard of that Moses about the Red Sea. Is <laughs> that was a great miracle in the Bible. So I'm going to share something about Moses that I found interesting. And I think that it will bless your heart too. Um, the first one was to talk less. It says, make known your troubles to God. And I just want to pause there and I say, you know, I just repeat it, make known your troubles to God. Because sometimes we tend to talk to others about our troubles, myself being guilty. But, you know, he's encouraging us to talk to God. He says, tell him, as did Moses, I cannot leave these people unless thy presence go with me. And I believe when we feel God's presence and know that he's with us, his divine, that divine connection will give us the power that we need to endure our troubles. Sometimes God will not take away the trouble or just deliver us out of them, as you may be thinking but, you know, as the Bible says, I think it's in James, um, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which are to test you as though some strange thing has happened to you, but count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing that the trying of your faith work at patience. And it went on to talk about how, how patience will develop, you know, faith and trust in God. So God has a reason for your suffering. God has a reason for the pain that you're experiencing. God has a reason for the troubles um, and the trials that you are experiencing in your life. So I would say to you, my friend, be patient. Just continue to pray. Continue to trust God. Dig deeper into his word. Don't give up. And even if you have if you have given up, please go back to God. Just kneel on your knees wherever you are and say, Lord, save me. I am a sinner. And, you know, just as Moses, you know, example in prayer is just sometimes if you can't even talk to others, just say the words as Peter did, Lord, save me, and God will come close to you. All right, I'm just going to share something else that um, here it says, um, well, we know the story of, you know, uh, you know, when, when Moses asked to see the presence of God, you know, see the glory of God and God, you know, put him in that, you know, the cleft of the rock and like pass before him. It says you're in, in spirit of prophecy and I'm reading from page 128, no earthly power or skill 
our learning can supply the place of God's abiding presence. So, you know, God asks to see the presence of God. And I believe it's the same thing for us. Let us not just ask for a house and a car and, you know, for, you know, these things have their place. But I believe, you know, as Matthew 6 and verse 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. So my friend, I'm asking you, please line up your priorities and it will be well to seek those things that those treasures that you can lay up in heaven where you know rust does not you know rust doesn't affect it and insects can't bite it up and destroy it as a car and a, a house can get burned down and so on but lay yourselves up treasures that cannot be destroyed another thing it says um in his love for them that's the people of israel he had prayed that his name might be blotted from the book of life I don't know if I could pray that prayer. You know, he, Moses, prayed that his name be blotted from the book of life rather than that they should be left to perish. Can you imagine, like, blot me out of the, the book of life if you're going to cause these people to perish? And you can read about that. And I'm probably going to read a little bit, Elder David, if I can. Um, you can find that story in Exodus 33. And I'm just going to read verse 12. So Exodus 33 and verse 12 says, And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee. Is this the desire of our hearts today, to know God? That I might find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. Amen. Amen. Nothing like the presence of God going with us. And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us up not hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. So here was Moses converse, conversing, conversing, you know, having a conversation with God. In verse 17, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Friends, God knows your name. He knows your name. He knows your name. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to read the rest of it, but you can go ahead and read uh, verse 18 to 20, 23. And I finished that part about that. And um, I'm just going to finish with this part. And then Elder David is going to talk a little bit more, right? Are you going to talk a little? Oh, you're finished your part, right? So we're just finishing up um, Moses' part. Okay, so God shut Moses out of Canaan. You may seem, seem that, well, that's sad. Why did he do that? But listen, God shut Moses out of Canaan to teach a lesson that should never be forgotten. And what is that lesson that should never be forgotten? That he requires exact obedience. We cannot give him 99%. God needs us to surrender all so that he can use us as his instrument. We can't give like 0.1% to the devil and 99.9% .9 to God. It's not like, you know, that, you know, those things on like the, that. yeah, you know, those things on the, um, I think it's the, what do you, the hand sanitizer, you always see like it kills, you know, <laughs> 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 you know, with God is just all or nothing, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's just like, if you offend in one of the commandments, you are, you are, he offended all, broke all. He wrote, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, Elder David, we should start setting up a quiz, you know, you know, yes. just say, <laughs> I'm thinking to set up a quiz, like quiz, quiz have a quiz in place. So, um, yeah, so he requires, you know, exact obedience and that men are to be, you know, are to, to beware of taking to themselves the glory which is due to his maker. But God did not forget or forsake his servant. God called Moses to an inheritance infinitely more glorious than the earthly Canaan. So even though he shut him out of heaven, he called him to um, a, an inheritance, the spirit of prophecy says, infinitely more glorious than earthly heaven. So, you know, you might think of what you're losing right now, 
But let me tell you, friend, ask God to open your eyes to see the inheritance that God has for you. So yes. even if you have lost something here on earth, whatever it may be, in whatever form it may be, just think about that inheritance that you can never lose, that God has gone to prepare for you. I pray that you and I will be as Moses, you know, men and women so highly honored of heaven. And that it's that is the end of my uh, little presentation on Moses. So now we're going to go into our prior focus. Um, all right. So Elder David is going to be praying for seeking God's will, and I'll be praying for establish an Eden home. So won't you join us now in prayer as we petition the throne of God? Uh, Me to start. Over to, yes, over to you, Elder David. <laughs> Father in heaven, Lord, we come to you and we're so inspired by these great men of God who had such intimate communion with you. Father, that's our desire, that you would, like Moses, teach us your ways that we may know you. Father, I just ask that, I thank you that your way is in the sanctuary, and I just ask you that you would uh, teach us how to follow you by faith, how to enter into that relationship that Enoch had, where after he had his son, he began to understand the heart of a father, to understand mm -hmm. the responsibilities and, and how the father responds to the needs of his children. Father, I ask that you would transform our view of our heavenly father yes. that we would see him so that we would see you lord uh, as you really are tender compassionate long suffering father we know this to be true you've put us up with us for all these years and you've yes, not sorry. cast us out father you're so merciful yes lord. father you put up with your children of israel for so many years You've put up with the Laodicean church for so many years, Lord. Father, thank you for your patience. Lord, I'm asking that you would stir us up, that you would revive us, that you would teach us to seek your face, that you would cause your face to shine upon us, that we would be saved. Lord, I'm just asking that you would, that you would make your will and your way known to us. Yes. Father, you said, if any man will... Uh, is willing to do his will, he will know the doctrine. Lord, yes. you, you made it clear that if we are willing to do what you ask us to do, if we are willing to submit our wills to your will, to not have our own way, but have your way, that, that we will know the doctrine and we will be protected in the time to come when, when uh, the whole world is following after the beast and his image and has been deceived uh, on the issues of worship. Yes, Father, I just ask that you would teach us to have absolute obedience to your will so that we can understand right and wrong, truth and error, yes. light and darkness. Mm -hmm. Father, your word is that we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. That when the sun sets us free, we shall be free indeed. Lord, we enter into that freedom that comes by your Holy Spirit, that comes by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Father, I'm lifting up those who are watching to, today, and I'm asking mm -hmm. that you would send those angels that excel in strength, that I ask that you would dispel and dis disperse the evil angels that try have been trying to tempt and discourage them. Father, I'm asking that there would be light in their dwellings, that the entrance of your word would bring light. Lord, I ask that their eyes would be uplifted to heaven, and that the atmosphere of heaven would come in answer to fervent prayer, claiming the promises of God. Lord, I'm asking that you would glorify your name. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, just before I pray, I just wanted to say something. Um, so I shared with Elder David that I recently went to another camp meeting in Alabama and, um, you know, the morning manna, which is, you know, manna is the bread from heaven, the food from heaven. Um, it was done by an elder, Sam Lopez. And, you know, his 
his his focus was on like an Eden home, having you know, having our home Adventist home, I should say. Sorry, Adventist homes. But you know, you may not be an Adventist or you may not understand Adventism yet. But God wants our home to be um, a home like the home that was in Eden. So um, sorry, I should say an Adventist home. It's it it it's like a little heaven on earth. And so I, I, um, I started this when I returned, you know, on uh, Sunday night here with, you know, with my son in the, in the night, we, we would read through, we started reading through child guidance. And last night, I, I told Elder David that I would just share this quickly. Last night when I was doing, you know, with my son, um, the first two paragraphs, not too much, just, just two paragraphs. And I, and I was explaining, you know, like, you know, what was in the paragraph and so on. And then my son, he started to cry. And I was like, why are you crying? No, why are you crying? And I was like, you know, a mother, we are like, you know, <laughs> our hearts are always in with everything. And he was like, oh, I broke God's commandment. And I was like, I was so touched. And I was like, which commandment did you break? And because I was explaining like what the two, the two paragraphs that I, you know, I didn't start from the beginning. I just chose a chapter within, you know, child guidance. And he said, oh, I, I covet, I covet. And God's, God's commandments said, don't you not covet? And he was like crying. And I just kind of switched the, um, the focus. And I, and I said, you know, um, you know, if we break God's commandment, we don't, we don't, well, it's okay to cry, but we should also ask God to forgive us. And I just paused and I prayed with him and he was smiling all again. But it just caused me to think when we break God's commandment, do we also want to cry? I could just see the tears coming and I was like so touched. And, you know, when we break God's commandment, it's the same thing. We should feel that sorrow and that deep remorse for sin. And, you know, I'm so thankful. And this morning we read, so I told him like in the night we would read child guidance and in the morning we're going to read Adventist Home. And we did read today Adventist Home. And when I, I just read two paragraphs and he was like, finish already? I want more. And I was like, no, let's just go through it slowly and <laughs> take it step by step. And then we prayed and he was like, pray, finish already. So, you know, Ellen G. White in another part, he says, do not wear the children out, try to be short. But I just, that I was, I was just happy that even though I read two paragraphs, he like, he said he wanted more, but I was like, just take your time. Let's take it slowly. Go by, you know, more of more. But when children are asking, when, when children are asking for more, I'm like, oh Lord, oh my Lord. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So I'll be praying for, um, you know, for us to establish that, you know, that Advent is home you know, what it is just like a little heaven on earth, because I know that in some of our homes is like hell on earth and we want to change that and Amen. we can change it by prayer. Amen. So won't you join us now in prayer? Let's pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we just praise you for who you are. We thank you for being our faithful friend. Lord, we thank you for being the creator. We recognize you that you are the redeemer. Um, you know, you died for the redemption of mankind because you created us in your image, Lord, in perfect um, uh, in perfection, Lord, but sin entered the world and it it marred your perfect uh, creation. But Lord, you did not leave us unto ourselves. You uh, came in the form of a man upon the earth, humanity and divine connected, and you died. Oh, love died on a cross for us. And we thank you for this great sacrifice, Lord. I pray that each day as we wake up, that the scenes of the last days of your life will be ever before us to recognize what great love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the children of God, a title that we do not deserve. But Lord, we praise you and we thank you for that. Lord, today I'm praying specifically, Lord, for our homes, Lord. Uh, you know, th there are different homes set up in different ways, Lord, but many times our homes homes, our hell. It, it, it is not what you would want it to be. And so, Lord, we're presenting like the homes right across the globe, Lord, not 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 specific to any country, but the entire world, oh God, they have families set up. And we know that that's where the devil want to attack, because when he can attack the families, he in turn attack the church and he in turn attack the society at large, because what make up churches, what make up families, what make up the world, if not different um, families combined together. So, we're going back to the beginning, which is the home where, where people are learned and taught differently. So I pray today that if there's somebody within the reach of our homes, that they would take us, you know, that they would just fall at your feet and say, Lord, I don't know to have an Adventist home. Can you teach me, Lord, how to get back to the basics of reading your word and learning and teaching children, especially, and understanding what is the role of the father as being the priest, as being the head of the family, to pray for the family and the role of the mother. And 
as she, you know, day by day go through the different cares that she will understand that to, to some, it would seem insignificant her role, but in Evan's eyes, her role is precious because she's a queen of the house. Lord, I pray that children, O oh God, art will be, hearts will be turned to their parents and parents' hearts will be turned to their children, O oh God. And they will understand that they need to uh, respect each other, to communicate with each other. But how can they learn unless they be taught? How can we know unless we study? So I pray that, again, your Holy Spirit will move upon families across the globe, Lord helping them to return to um, holiness, return to studying your words, whatever form it is, even, you know, even as I shared, like just reading um, child guidance for morning or evening worship and um, Adventist home for evening or morning worship and also never forgetting to study the Bible for it is by these things that we can learn and know, you know, as an acronym, you know, Bible, it says is basic instruction before leaving earth. Lord, we know that our time on earth is very short. We're living in the toes of that statue of Daniel too, as it were, Lord, in the very end of time. This world is almost soon to end. And Lord, we want our homes to be a little heaven on earth. So help us, Lord. Um, show us ways. Bring people in our pathway. Um, just open our eyes Lord, to different avenues so how we can make our homes that home which is a heaven on earth we thank you lord for answering these prayers we thank you for uh for your abiding holy spirit help us to be humble and to um to treat each other as how you treat us in jesus precious and holy name we we pray in that th with thanksgiving in jesus precious name amen amen right praise the lord <laughs> All right, so Elder David, do you have any final thoughts, any burning thoughts? Oh, anything? Just, just so inspired by what you read in, in uh, Genesis 30 or Exodus 33, where Moses was talking with God, teach me your ways that I may know you. And then he goes on to say, Lord, recognizing his weakness and his great need, Lord, show me your glory. Mm -hmm. And it is, is by beholding that we become changed. The, the, mm -hmm. Beholding the glory of the Lord is what transforms us from glory to glory. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings us the presence of Jesus, and he reveals Jesus to us so that we can, that we can see him. As we behold him, it changes us. We mm -hmm. need to behold his character. We need to understand who he is, how he responds. The more time we spend beholding that beautiful character of love, and mm -hmm. compassion, that love that seeks not its own. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seek to promote itself, doesn't seek to build up and exalt self. It seeks to serve. The, the keeping of the commandments of God is to love God with all your heart, mind, and strength, and to serve your fellow humanity. That was who Jesus was. And the more we see his love and his compassion, which just is poured out for others, regardless of himself, we will become like him. Amen. He will come take us home. Praise the Lord. And 1 Corinthians 13 is a good chapter to read, right? Yes, when he talks right. about love. Right. So you can go ahead and read that and just remember that God is always with us. <laughs> All right. So thank you for joining us. And don't forget, if you have your prayer request, to send them to prayerpowerprinciples at gmail.com and we will be praying with you. We will treat each prayer request with the strictest confidentiality. And just keep praying to God on your own also, you know, but we are here if you need us and just continue to um, be a light in your community and don't put, you know, limitations on God because God is all powerful, is greater than anything that you're experiencing and any burdens or troubles that you're going through right now. So just trust his mighty hand as he led these uh, people, these men and women. Well, we didn't talk about women today. We talk about e Enoch and um, Abraham and, and, and Jacob and Moses. But just as they were men and women of prayer, our prayer is that you too will become a man and a woman of prayer because that's where the true power lies. God bless you until we see you next week. <laughs> Praise the Lord.